हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे विल डिस्कस दी लाइफ साइकिल ऑफ पक्सीनिया ग्लैमरिस ट्रिटिकाय पक्सीनिया इज अ फंजाय व्हिच बिलोंग्स टू द सब डिविजन बेसिडियो माइकोटेना एंड द ऑर्डर इज यूरिडनेस फैमिली इज पक्सीनियासी सो पक्सीनिया कॉजेस अ डिजीज व्हिच इज नोन एज द ब्लैक स्टेम रस्ट ऑफ व्हीट पक्सीनिया इज अ ऑब्लिगेट पैरासाइट इट इज पॉलीमॉर्फिक मैक्रोसाइक्लिक एंड हेट्रोसियस फंजाय नाउ व्हाट डू वी मीन बाय पॉलीमॉर्फिक पॉलीमॉर्फिक मींस टोटल फाइव टाइप ऑफ स्पोर्स आर फॉर्म in the entire life cycle of paxinia and macrocyclic means the life cycle is very long and heterosexual terms indicates that the paxinia completes its life cycle on the two host one is wheat which is primary host the secondary one is barberry leaf which is also known as barberis vulgaris so in the life cycle five distinct stages are present in the regular sequence these stages can be indicated as stage 0 stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 and stage 4 and these stages also indicates the presence of uh, spermegonia which is also known as pycnia asia uridia pilia and basidium which bears the basidial spores in india there are total three rust diseases which are found on the wheat one is black stem rust of wheat which is caused by paxinia gramnis triticae the other one is known as the yellow or striped rust of wheat which is caused by paxinia striformis and the third one is known as brown rust of wheat which is caused by the paxinia recondita so here we will discuss only the life cycle of paxinia graminis triticae now the vegetative mycelium how what is the vegetative mycelium in uh, the case of paxinia it is well developed it is septate intracellular that means the mycelium creeps between the host cells and it forms the hostoria for procuring the nutrition from the host cells and the hostoria are knob shaped and it uh, this hostorium they absorbs the nutrition from the host cells now in the case of uh, paxinia the two type of mycelium is formed that is monokaryotic and dikaryotic the monokaryotic mycelium refers to the formation of single karyon or single nucleus in the cell and the dikaryotic mycelium means the two different strand nuclei are present in the single cell here you can see in this diagram there are two basidial spore one basidial spore is of positive strain and one basidial spore is of negative strain now this basidial spore will germinate and it form the primary mycelium but this primary mycelium will show the presence of nucleus which is of positive strain and this basidial spore which we are indicating as negative this will also germinate to form the primary mycelium but this primary mycelium will show the presence of nuclei which are of negative strain so afterwards these two primary mycelium one of positive strain and one of negative strain they fuse and they give rise to the secondary mycelium and this process is also known as dikaryotization or formation of dikaryotic mycelium or formation of a dikaryon cell di means two and karyon refers to the nucleus so two nucleus of opposite strain in one cell so vegetative mycelium is well developed septate it is intracellular it creeps between the cells and it forms the hostorium now the symptoms of this disease they appear on the wheat stem as well as leaf in the form motion of in the form of formation of uridopostule or uridosorus tilotopostule or tilotosorus here you can see the postules are formed on the leaf and here the postules are formed on the stem these are known as the uridosori or uridopostule these are known as the tilotosori or tilotopostule now if we will cut a section through this uridosori we'll observe some structure somewhat like this these are the host cells and the mycelium is creeping in between and afterward some of the mycelium they starts growing upwards and they show the formation of uridospore here the structure of one uridospore you can see that it is a stalk structure and it is one cell only one cell is present and inside the one cell two type of nuclei one is positive strain and one is negative strain nuclei is present and the wall of the uridospore there are two walls the outer wall is known as the axine which is acanulate or ornamented and the inner wall is empty and it shows the presence of four germ tubes which are present equidistantly one here one here one this side and one this side these four germ pores are present and through this germ pore this uh, uridospore it germinate these uridospores are also known as the repetitive spore because they keep on germinating on the same leaf and they form the uridosori in this diagram you can see the uridospore is germinating the uridospore germinate through the germ pore and it form a germ tube now this germ tube it enters inside the leaf through the stomatal chamber it, it forms a apresorium and this apresorium further forms a peg like structure which is 
which further forms the substomatal vesicle and which give rise to the secondary mycelia. In this way, this urodospore keep on germinating and they give rise to the fresh urodosori and these are known as the repetitive spores. But in the end season, the tilutopostular tilutosori are formed. Now, if you cut a section through this tilutosori, you will see somewhat like this. Again, the mycelium is creeping in between the host cells. You can see the red color mycelia and the hostoria are formed which uh, absorb the nutrition from the host cells and some of the mycelium grow upwards and they form the tilutospores. Now, here is the diagram of the tilutospore. Tilutospore is also a stalk structure, but it is bicell. You compare it with urodospore. In case of urodospore, there was only one cell, but in case of tilutospore, two cells are present and both the cells show the presence of two nuclei. That means one is of positive strain and one is of negative strain. Here also the outer wall is known as the exene which is thick and the inner wall is known as antene which is thin. Now what happens that these tilutospores, these are actually the resting spores. After the formation of tilutospore, they go for the resting period or go for the dormancy. So when the favorable conditions are present, this tilutospore germinate. For the germination of the tilutospore, freezing temperature is required. So these tilutospore germinate and during the time of germination, they form a promycelium like structure or basidium and before the formation of basidium or promycelium both the nuclei one is positive and one is negative they fuse it with each other and this diploid nuclei that uh, it divides through reduction division and it forms the four haploid nuclei and thus it gives rise to the four basidiospores so these you can see this is the immature uh, tilutospore this is the mature tilutospore and this is the germinating tilutospore and it germinates in, and it forms either promycelium or basidium which give rise to the four basidiospores. So out of these four basidiospores, two basidiospores are of positive strain and two are of negative strain. So these basidiospores, they can't germinate again on the wheat leaf but they germinate on the barberry leaf. So these basidiospores reach to the secondary host which is known as the Barberry and they germinate and they form the pycnidal cups on the upper surface and the acial cups on the lower surface. That is pycnidium on the upper side of the leaf and acial cups on the lower side of the leaf. Now if we cut a section through this portion of the barberry leaf, we will see somewhat structure like this. Now you can see this is the upper epidermis and this is the lower epidermis. On the upper epidermis, these pycnia are formed which are the flat shaped structure. These are also known as uh, pycnidium or these are also known as spermagonia as you can see. Inside the pycnidium, from the lower portion, spermatophores are formed and these spermatophores, they give rise to the spermatia or pycnospores. And apart from these pycnospores, few sterile uh, paraphyses are also present which are present at the neck of this pycnidium and several flexus hyphae or receptive hyphae are also formed which starts forming from the base and they grow upward. So in this way inside the pycnidium which is a flash shaped structure the spermatia or pycnospores are formed as well as the flexus hyphae is formed. Now what happens when insect comes or visit this portion and so he what happens these uh, spermatia or pycnospore they get stick to the legs of the insect. Now when this insect goes and visits some other pycnidium which is formed by the uh, germination of the basidiospore of opposite strain, then the fertilization of the flexus hyphae occurs. Now what happens when the spermatia, they reaches to the tip of the flexus hyphae, the wall of the contact dissolves and the, spermatia, the nucleus of the spermatia, it migrates to the flexus hyphae. Now here you can see the again the monokaryotic mycelium will be converted into the dikaryotic mycelium and it is known as the dikaryotization and it is brought about the uh, by the uh, insect which brings the uh, pycnidium or spermatium over this flexus hyphae. Now when the formation of pycnidium which is a flash shaped structure is taking place on the lower side a bell like structure or a cup like structure is also formed which is known as the acl cups. Now what happens here also some monokaryotic mycelium accumulates on the lower side but due to the dikaryotization this nucleus it does the dikaryotization process over here and the aciduospore mother cell is formed in the lower surface. Now this aciduospore mother cell divides and it gives rise to the two cells. One is known as the aciduospore and the other one is known as the intercalary or disjunctor cell. In this way a row of aciduospores are formed and in which in between the two aciduospores disjunctor or intercalary cell is present. 
although this intercalary cell or distancer cell is sterile and it is or it has no purpose for the germination or bring out any infection in the life cycle but it separates the acidiospore in the later stages now these acidiospores get detached from each other and through the wind or water they reaches again to the wheat leaf to form the infection and they give rise to the dikaryotic mycelium these acidiospores or acidiospores cannot reinfect the barberry leaf in this way we can see the infection starts on the wheat leaf which is due to the presence of the germination of erodospore these are the repetitive spore which cause the local infection and the fresh infection can be caused by the germination of acidiospore thus four type of spores are formed we can again see here one is erodospore teratospore and teratospore germinate to give rise the basidiospore the basidiospore germinates give rise to the pycnidium or flask like structure in which spermatia are formed and the function of spermatia is dikaryotize the flexor siphi which reaches downward and the acidial mother cell is formed which give rise to acidiospores and these acidiospores further germinates to give rise to the dikaryotic mycelium in this way we will see the life cycle of paxinia gramis stratica is completed on the two host when is primary host which is known as wheat on this only dikaryotic mycelium is present and the secondary host which is the barberry leaf on this monokaryotic mycelium is present how the monokaryotic mycelium gets converted into the dikaryotic mycelium we have discussed over here when the spermatia reaches to the flexor siphi and it reaches down and it forms the acidiospore now you can take the screenshot if you want to take thank you